Hello, what is up everybody? Today we are pitting this used Gadget Classic against my 10 year old Rocket Giotto. We're gonna get into shot quality, milk steaming, and of course with machines that are this old, we're gonna talk about repairability. So if you're the kind of person who likes to fix up old machines, if you're into bargain hunting, or if you just like the option to buy secondhand, I really believe that each of these machines is a good option for the right person. But does the Gaja have what it takes to go up against the rocket? And what exactly is it that you get for three times the money? So Rocket is one of the big players in the prosumer home espresso market. And these are heat exchange machines with E61 group heads. Essentially what that means is that you're gonna be able to brew espresso and steam milk at the same time. And the E61 group head circulates water continuously, meaning that whenever you go to pull a shot, you're gonna have really good temperature stability. Specs wise, this is basically an appartamento which can be found new for about $17.50 and can occasionally be found refurbished for hundreds less. I believe refurbished for this one, I paid $1,200 and that was about 10 years ago. Some downsides compared to the Gaji is that it is physically huge and takes about a half hour to warm up because it has such a high capacity. Now, the Gadget Classic is a beloved machine in the home espresso community for its simplicity, ease of use, and for being relatively mod friendly. And Gadget actually embraced this with the release of the Gadget Classic Pro, which packages some of the more popular mods in with the Gadget Classic. Okay, hold on a sec. Sorry, I think I gave Gadget a little bit too much credit right there. So they do have a new steam wand on the Gadget Classic Pro and it comes in a couple different colors, heats up a little bit faster. But aside from that, it doesn't really have a lot of the mods that people like to put on it. And the steam wand itself doesn't articulate either, so it's really not that great actually. I think I was a little confused in thinking of the Sylvia Pro, which does have a lot of the mods that people add on, but it is about twice expensive, so not really worth it in my opinion. But anyways, let's get back to it. At its core though, it's a single boiler machine, meaning that there's a setting for espresso and there's a setting for milk, and you have to switch and wait in between doing either. The gadget is also quite a bit smaller, lighter, and easier to take apart if you ever need to fix anything. So like I said at the beginning, both of these machines are used. And I love buying used machines because they tend to hold their value a little bit better, making it easier to upgrade over time and making it less scary to have to learn on the fly with repairs. I actually started with a machine very similar to this Gadja and eventually upgraded over time to the Rocket once a refurb became available. Now, of course, it's also really important that you buy from a reputable seller. You never know how the machine's gonna show up if you're buying from just a random person. This was actually from a friend who told me that it didn't really work anymore, but I could have it and fix it up and find something to do with it if I wanted to. Whereas with the Rocket, I bought this from Seattle Coffee Gear and it was a refurb. They have really good service in-house and were able to help me over the phone with some of the repairs I needed when I first had the machine. But with the Gadget, of course, I was pretty much on my own and I'll show some screenshots right here of what I had to deal with earlier today as I was getting ready to shoot this video. So as as long as you know what you're getting into and you have plenty of ways to mitigate your risks when buying used gear, you can get a lot of machine for your money. But now let's go through the repairs that I've done on each of these. So when I finally got this machine in the mail from Seattle Coffee Gear, I was super excited about it. But when I turned it on and filled it up with water, there was actually a bit of a leak in the machine. However, I was able to call up Seattle Coffee Gear's tech support and they guided me through it over the phone and it was super easy. And I really appreciated it because I was able to get up and running with the machine that day and I didn't have to wait, I didn't have to send it back, I didn't have to order any parts that I actually didn't need. Thanks to their service department, I was able to get it up and running that day. The next repair I had to do on this machine wasn't for a couple of years, but it was replacing the vibratory pump. Now, a vibratory pump is a pretty easy fix. It's pretty easy to just plug and play. It's not like your rotary pump, which is a lot bigger deal. And then more recently, this isn't really a repair, but I adjusted the OPV, I installed this little pressure gauge so I could dial in my pump pressure the way I want it to. And all these repairs were made so much easier because I knew I was buying this from a good seller and the machine showed up in really good shape right from the get-go. 
Now, the Gaggia, on the other hand, was in much worse shape when I got it. It was super dirty, it had definitely been neglected, and probably been sitting around just collecting dust for a very long time. So right away, it needed a huge deep clean, but before I could really finish that and do it thoroughly, I needed to install a new pump because the pump on it was totally dead. So once I got that all settled and was able to pull shots and finish cleaning the machine more thoroughly, I went ahead and installed this steam wand, which is a early version of the Ranchilio Silvia steam wand, which was pretty easy to install, but I admittedly did a bad job. And we're gonna see that in just a second. So if you're gonna buy a Gacha Classic from an unknown seller, perhaps on eBay or somewhere else online, be prepared to do some work and do plenty of research beforehand so you know what these repairs look like and exactly what you're getting into. All right, so let's get into it. Let's pull some shots with both these machines. Let's steam some milk. For the shots, I'm gonna use my Baratza Vario, which I also bought secondhand and has recently been refurbished by Baratza's team. It's got lots of Forte parts. It's got the stainless steel burr set. And to give the Gaja an even shot, I'm gonna use the same basket, which is an 18 gram Barista Pro basket in each of these machines. Cool, pretty good start. I'm gonna keep this off to the side and then do a side by side. I know this machine pretty well and that is what I would expect out of this machine. So I'm gonna keep this right here, pull a shot with the Gaja and then compare them side by side. Okay, we're back with the Gaja. I'm gonna attempt to temperature surf with this to get it to be as optimal as we can. Come on. Doesn't like that, I guess. Okay, so right now the boiler is heating up once that light comes on, and then once that turns off, it's gonna be at a optimal brewing temperature, so we'll go ahead and brew right from there. Now this has a new gasket, so it's gonna take a little bit of <laughs> work to get it in there. All right, so that is all set. And I've, been, I've been preparing for this moment. So if you want to get a scale under there, that is how you do that. And the light just came off, so let's go ahead and go. All right, so honestly, it looked pretty similar to me out the gate. Pulled about the same amount of time. Oop, come on. So let's see, I've got the shot from the rocket here. Let's taste the shot from the Gaja. And then shot from the rocket. Hmm. To be perfectly honest with you, there is very little difference between these two shots. Maybe if anything, there's a bit more acidity in the rocket and then a little bit more heaviness and sweetness in the Gaja. I'm gonna taste this one more time. This is still pretty hot as well. So temperature can have a big effect on the way you perceive taste. All right, actually the brightness is starting to come through on the Gaja as well. So really, really similar in terms of how these are pulling shots as far as the flavor goes. As far as how they pull shots as a user experience, it's extremely different. The gadget, of course, you need to put in a little bit more work to get the temperature just right to make sure your shot is gonna be consistent every single time. With the rocket, you really just need to do a quick flush and temperature should be right there and it's ready to go for you pretty much whenever. So yeah, the Gaja is looking pretty good right now. Let's go ahead and steam some milk and see what the differences are with milk steaming. 
Okay, so on both machines, I'm steaming for a five ounce cappuccino. Milk steaming goes pretty fast on the rocket, especially on a smaller pitcher like this one. But if you go larger than a 12 ounce drink, it doesn't perform great, but it will still get you pretty good texture. All right, looking nice. We're gonna build suspense because I didn't get the pour quite in this shot. And not too bad. All right, so after that pretty messy purge, let's go on the Gajia. So because the seam one is so short and doesn't articulate, and actually this one doesn't move at all because of the way I installed it, I had a really hard time finding a good angle to steam. Started out okay, and then some bubbles made their way to the top and kind of got stuck in the middle. Don't worry too much if this happens to you, just trust that there is still plenty of motion happening below the surface and you'll be able to work it out. Alright, let's see if we can work with that. So a few taps, a lot of swirling. And let's actually pour for the camera this time. All right, so pretty serviceable, honestly. Yeah, to be perfectly honest, I am not upset about that at all. Here it is next to the rocket. All right, my friends, so there you have it. That is the Gadget Classic versus my 10-year-old Rocket Giotto. And to be honest, the Gaja did pretty darn good. I'm pretty impressed with the quality of these drinks, with the espresso, with the milk. It really did hold a candle to the Rocket. The big, obviously, the big difference is in usability, aesthetics, size, and then the big one, price. So $450 brand new and maybe about $300 used versus $1750 brand new, maybe around $1200, $1300 refurbished. If you can find it from a good seller, it's definitely worth it, but it really depends and it's totally up to you. What are your needs? What are your interests? What is the size of your kitchen? I really don't think you can go wrong with either of these machines. It really just is up to you. So I really hope that you enjoyed this rundown and I'm curious, do you have a used espresso machine? Have you done any repairs on it? How did they go? And is it something that you enjoy about owning an old espresso machine? Let me know down in the comments and I will see you all next time. Take care.